it is. My new baby. I've been looking for one of these for years. Absolute years. This is the Grundig Satellite 800. Let me tell you a little short story about this particular radio. It's used. And about a year and a half ago, again, I was always watching out for this radio. And on the local Craigslist, there was a radio like this for sale. And I quickly uh, responded and say that, you know, I was interested in this radio. Can I come by and take a look at it? And within uh, about 15 minutes to half an hour, the gentleman came back with an email and said, I'm sorry, it's sold. So I missed it. And it hadn't been listed for more than three or four hours. Um, so I totally missed it. And I think I knew the guy. I didn't recognize the email address, but I think the new, I knew the guy. He was a gentleman that I went to a couple of ham fest with. And he, he, the location of where it was um, advertised from on Craigslist was Safety Harbor. And that's where this gentleman lived. But I did not contact him and ask him if um, he sold his radio. I just put my tail between my legs and say, well, I missed it. Next time I'll be a little faster. Well, yesterday I got an email notification from Craigslist. I'm, I'm monitoring several things on Craigslist, and one of them is shortwave radios. And sure enough, it was this listing for the shortwave radio. And Craigslist in my area doesn't have many listings for amateur radio equipment or shortwave radios. So you don't see very many. I clicked on it and it was a picture of this radio. And uh, I immediately sent the gentleman that was selling it an email and said, I'm interested in this radio. I'd like to come by and see it. And within a half an hour, he sent me an email back and he said, sure, you can come by and see it uh, anytime today. And that was Saturday, of course. Um, and here's my phone number. Give me a call before you come. Okay, no problem. So I called him, and this was about 8.30, and I said it would take me about a half hour to get there because he, he lived uh, about mm, 11 miles from me. And uh, so he said, okay, I'll be waiting for you. So I quickly got ready and headed out there because I was afraid that somebody could show up at his uh, house and make him an offer and it would be gone, just like the previous one. Well, I put his address in my cell phone's map program to give me directions. I kind of had an idea how to get there, but I always like to use that because sometimes I get an area and I get lost easily. I easily get lost. So I did that. So my cell phone was giving me instructions how to get there. And I ended up with there's a, a fairly good sized lake south of me and I ended up on the wrong side of the lake and the street I was on which was the street he lived on stopped on the east side of the lake and of course it didn't go through and that's what my GPS was telling me it goes through but it didn't okay so I wandered around got around the lake got on the other side and um, got lost and to make it a little short story I finally got there. I was in a uh, half hour late and I was sweating bullets because I thought it would surely be gone. He was still there. He showed it to me. I made him an offer. Uh, he already had a pretty low price to begin with and I made him an offer a little lower. And the reason being is that the AC adapter he had for it was this guy right here, which is not the original. And this is a Chinese knockoff. And I've noticed it's advertised on Amazon and eBay for this radio. And it's marked the correct voltage and the correct current. Well, you can see it's pretty wimpy. And this thing requires an amp, 9 volts at an amp. So he told me right outright, he says, 
If you want to listen to shortwave, you can't use this. It's just too noisy. You can listen to FM, no problem, but shortwave, forget it. And so I said, well, I'm going to have to buy uh, a new adapter because I want to operate it on AC because it, since it's such a big radio and, and requires an amp, a full amp of power, even though you can use six D cell batteries, it's going to eat them up. So he said, okay, I'll take your offer um, and give you, you know, a reduction. So great. I was elated. I quickly packed it up and put it in my truck and zoomed home. Hooked it up and sure enough, I tried it with this AC adapter in the AC or the noise, I don't know if it was AC noise, but the noise this thing created on shortwave was just horrendous. You couldn't hear any station. So forget that. And I spent, now this is going to be a long video because I'm really excited about this and I apologize if it's a long, <laughs> it's a long video but I'm really excited about this radio. So anyway, I put that aside. I did some searching on the internet for a replacement and I did find this one again and so I knew I didn't want that one so far I have not found a high quality that I could tell from the advertisement AC adapter so I'm going to have to do some more searching and if anyone knows a source of a good AC adapter again this is 9 volts and it requires a 1 amp uh, um, one amp of current. If anybody knows of anything, please send me an email or leave a comment of where I could find one. I just I started my search and I kind of just gave up. So anyway, <laughs> turns out uh, it requires six D cells, and I was short of D cell batteries. I had what I thought was six but they were of various qualities. I had some Duracells and then I had some oh here they are right here I had some Rayovac and I've had these for quite a while I probably had these for nine months still in the package well I put six of those cells in there. These were unused batteries. I put the six cells in there and I went to turn on the radio and it radio did not come on. Now, he had showed me the radio operational with the AC adapter. He did not have any D cells. He had already used up his D cells in this radio. So I was getting a little worried at that stage. Did I, you know, make a mistake buying this radio? Maybe it won't operate on DC batteries and maybe even if I replace this adapter, it's still not going to work right. Again, it works fine on FM with the adapter. Which is typical, FM is not susceptible to RF noise like these things generate, like shortwave is. And I've told you about my office that RF just kills my shortwave listening. Even operating on batteries. Okay, so I thought I thought I had it done. It did not seem to work. It did, nothing came on. Seemed, and again, these were new batteries that I got out of a package. These plus some, two of these, and, no, three of these and three Duracells. Well, see that bottom? This is kind of an indication right here. The bottom on this thing is kind of rounded off. I just noticed that. Uh, this is one of the bad ones. And so, I had some D cell batteries that I had used for a short pre period of time doing a demonstration and I took them out and I put them over with my used batteries away from my brand new batteries. So anyway I first took these batteries and I took my battery tester and I tested each one. One battery only showed a half a volt so there probably was my problem. Again it's right out of the package, and this was a Rayovac Industrial Plus. Well, it was dead. Theoretically, you can half a volt, it's, it's dead. The radio wouldn't work. 
So I used one of those used batteries plus the new batteries, put them in, the radio came alive. Okay, this, like I said, is going to be a long story. Then I noticed that the BATT indicator on the display was flashing. Let me zoom in a little bit here. You can see it's flashing right now. I'm on batteries. Well, I thought, okay, uh, there's another problem. Whoops, I kicked the camera. Sorry about that. Um, so I went on the internet, did a search on this condition, and sure enough, this radio has a monitor, and it monitors the battery voltage to at 9 volts. And if it drops below a tenth of a volt, or maybe a two-tenths of a volt, Below 9 volts, that light, I mean, that indicator comes on, starts flashing. So, again, I already knew I had one battery in that group, and I was using a used battery to replace that one dead one. So, my, bad, my total battery voltage for those six cells probably is below 9 volts. I'm sure it's below 9 volts, but that's probably why it's flashing. So, whew, another problem, not a real problem. So, I'm not worrying about that anymore. Okay, so that's kind of brings you up to where I'm at. I, he did not have a manual for it, but there is a manual online, so I just downloaded the manual um, and printed it out. Started reading how to use this Reddit, which I'm still just learning how to use this Reddit. Now, um, this thing is mammoth, and I think that was one of the selling points when Grundy brought this radio out was. They wanted, they wanted to have the biggest, baddest portable radio of anybody at that time. And this came out about 2000, year 2000 is when it came out. And um, it had mixed reviews because it was quite expensive. I think it was, I mean, I got, I got some notes here. Let's see. When it came out new, it was $500. And what's amazing? And then, after it, you know, had its initial release and everything, then over the years it became a collector's item because not many people bought them, so there weren't that many used one out out there, and it went out of production because it didn't really catch on. So, it's right now it's a collector's item, and if you go to Amazon. You will see there is one new one, new one, on Amazon for $3,000. Now that's kind of outrageous. And quite often you'll see those kind of outrageous things on Amazon. There are a couple of used ones, and they are $475. If you go, now remember, this thing cost $500, brand new, back in 2000. If you go on eBay right now, there's several, three or four, um, and they range from $300 to $500. Well, I'll, I'll just say I paid a whole lot less than that. And when, if, if the gentleman that I bought it from, bought it from my friend, um, he paid a lot less than that too. So, he was... He was giving me basically as good a deal as he got and a little bit less because the AC adapter was no good for shortwave. So that's kind of the history of how this happened. You can tell I'm a little excited and i got to quit waving my hands. I'm sorry about that. But anyway, this thing is mammoth. Let me get my little ruler out here. This is about 20 inches across, about 9 inches high, and about six inches deep. That's how big this thing is. Mammoth display. That thing is huge. That display is huge. Big, big, big S meter. Now if I could zoom in a little more, which I, well I can move the camera. Let me move the camera and stand by for the shakiness. Okay, now we got full screen there. So you can see how big it is. Now see if I got enough room here to turn it so you can see my 750 behind it. I don't know if I've got enough room here or not. Okay, there's my 750. It's, let's measure it real quick. 
it's 12 inches, four, excuse me, 14 inches across. This was, what I say? <laughs> takes up our, our whole desk. This is 20 inches across. I'm going to have to find a place to put this monster. It's got, um, it's got, okay, let's go through the functions. Let's just start down here. Here's the power switch. Here's the headphone jack. Volume. Bass. Treble. On the airband, it has a squelch, which is, since the airband is VHF, and it's normally there or not there, uh, that's when a squelch will be handy. It has an attenuation button. It has an automatic gain control button, in which has two modes, a fast mode and a slow mode. Um, bandwidth, it has three bandwidths, 2.3, 4.0, and 6 kilohertz. So right now it's at 6. It has the sync detector, and... The sync detector works on this radio. This is one of the few radios that I have found that the sync detector works. My Sony radios, it works, but my Texan radios, the sync detector does not work that well. I don't know why. It has single sideband, upper and lower single sideband. It has four bands, air band, FM, shortwave, and AM. Okay, and so it tunes from 100 kilohertz long wave to 30 megahertz on the shortwave band. So it's got long wave and shortwave. Full spectrum. Ah, now, okay, that's the buttons on the bottom. Over here we have a clock button. You can push that and it'll show you the clock. And you can use that button also to set the clock. It has a timer you can set up to uh, have it come on at a certain time of day. This is the lamp button. Now, the one thing about the lamp or the backlight, it's not in bright light. Now, we're not even bright light, but medium light, it's not that bright. You, I, you can see, barely see, it's on right now, it's off. It's on right now, it's off. Of course, right now, I've got a lot of lights on. I don't need it. But, as you would expect, it won't stay on if you're on batteries because it'll drain the batteries pretty quickly. But if you have an AC adapter, you can set it and it will stay on. Okay. Then here's a numeric keypad for direct dialing frequencies or memory locations. It has... Uh, how many memories does it have? I forgot. Jeez. How soon I forget. I think it's like... 90 memories or 70 memories. Uh, not a lot, but more than adequate. So it has memories. Um, this button here is to clear the entry if you got the wrong entry or to lock the display. Then we have the function keys here in this area here. Uh, a store function key for storing a frequency that you found that you like. Uh, you can turn the beep. It has a beep for the when you're pushing keys, turn it off and on. It has a skip so that you can scan the memory locations that you've stored and you can tell it to skip an individual one. That's what that's for. You can delete the contents of a memory location. Um, I, I'm not sure what the memo button is. I haven't used that. Here's the VFO button to go from manually tuning to memory tuning, the shortwave band selection so it will jump through the shortwave bands very quickly for you, and then the scan function to scan the stored memory frequencies. And here's an up and down arrow for tuning, plus the tuning knob is right here. It only has one tuning knob, but it has a fast and slow tuning mode. Um, has these two rack handles just for looks. It's Actually, you can carry it by these, but it's basically for looks similar to what's on my 750. You have these little handles. It has a carrying handle. Now, this thing is heavy. It is very heavy. Let me see if i got any specs here. It tells you power to weight. 15 pounds. This thing weighs 15 pounds 
with no batteries and then of course it takes six D cell batteries probably adds I don't know number three or four, num an, another three or four pounds so it has a very long telescopic antenna this thing is I think it's at least three feet long I haven't measured it but very long now in the back um, let me see if I can turn it around it's not easy to move to say the least and I've got it hooked to my external antenna so we're going to unhook that first okay there we go oh, turn this baby around Okay, you probably can't see it very well, and I've got zoomed in about as far as I can go. But it's got a number of connections for antennas. Um, this is the first one here is the airband antenna, external antenna jack, and this is a oh, I forgot F-type connector. This is an F-type connector. This is um, for hooking a like a 300. Uh, ohm twin lead antenna for FM and then here's a standard PL239 for shortwave and the switches for switching which antenna is used is right here these two switches so it would be nice if they were on the front but they're not and and also it switches to the whip antenna as one of the options. And then over here, this is the power connector. This is, I don't know what that is. Let me uh, see if I can see it. I haven't used that. I think it's, oh my gosh, I'm going to move the camera out of the way and look down there. See it on my head. That is the uh, speaker output. And then, okay, let me get the camera back onto the radio. Okay, so this is a speaker output. It's a big eighth inch jack. Also, there was the headphones earbud type jack on the front. And then this is the line out RCA connectors, connections. If, for instance, you want to hook it, hook it to an amplifier, recorder, or your computer. So that's what that's for. So that's the connections on the back. This is the big battery cage or compartment. Six D cells go in that baby. Oh, you turn it back around here. Boy, if anything gets slips on underneath that thing, it's going to get crushed. <laughs> turn the camera back over here. Uh, very big display, like I said. I'm all, I was on uh, 93.95, which they have said. Oh, I took the antenna loose, so I don't have any antenna now because I've got the switch hooked for the external antenna and there's no external antenna so I'm not getting anything now. Um, this is in a little square here this is what memory location is in use when you're in the memory mode. This over here tells you what meter band you're in. Let me see if I can slide the camera a little closer. Ooh, I got terrible reflections. Sorry about that. And uh, here's the frequency, big, big numbers. What band you're on, this is saying SW for short wave. Uh, the battery indication is flashing, as I told you why. It tells me that I've got the AGC on. I can turn that off. Well, I take that back. I can make it slow AGC or fast AGC. And then the mode here is AM mode. I can go to single sideband mode, lower sideband, upper sideband. Um, and I can turn the AM sync on and off. I had the AM sync, sync on then. There's lower and upper sideband. Okay. Um, that's about it. I can say it's got a nice big S meter, analog S meter. It has on the top... Um, it has a map of time zones, uh, a table of the international broadcast meter bands and what the frequency range is for each. That's about it. That's about it. I, the, the sound, this is a huge speaker. Let me back out a little bit here. This, this is a huge speaker, so the sound quality is fabulous. Um, 
and it has bass and treble control. It's it's basically, I I would just venture to say it's basically an oversized version of the 750. I I did some testing earlier where I had uh, both radios on, both on the same frequency, and I used my antenna switch to switch the antenna between the two radios, and the reception was about the same, which on my 750 reception is excellent, therefore I can say that the reception on this radio is excellent. But it does take up a lot of a lot of room, and so it's really, like I say, it's really what I would consider, consider a collector's item more than just a functional radio. So if you're like me and you got a lot of radios and you want one more, this would be a nice one to own. So that's the show. Uh, let's see if I left out anything. Look, look at the, I'm looking at the spec sheet right now. See if anything jumps out. Very low sensitivity and very good selectivity on tuning. I think that's about it. Oh, the antenna. This telescopic antenna, I thought it was three feet. It's 58 inches. That wouldn't even go up to the, it would hit the ceiling in my room before I got all the way up. That's 58 inches long. Ooh. And that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. It does require, like I say, it does require nine volts at one amp. You know, I'm going to have to try to find an AC adapter if you know of one, a good AC adapter. Um, please let me know. So that's the show. If you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. I'm very excited about this radio. I finally, I've been looking for, oh, I don't know, six or seven years for one of these. And I finally got one at a very, very good price that I could justify having it as a collector's radio. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.